Hello friends, uh, in this video tutorial we will be looking at the Denier Replication Initiation in Escherichia coli. Now the, for this initiation stage we need two important proteins, one is called DNA A mm, and another one is uh, called the helicase or DNA B. So DNA A and DNA B uh, along with uh, themselves uh, and with the help of their own uh, assistance they uh, achieve this important a pretty hard task of reopening of this DNA complexes and make an open complex for the room for this DNA replication. Now if somebody asks you which is the most important step above all this DNA replication, you must tell him that undoubtedly this step is uh, this initiation stage of the DNA replication. Why? Because you can uh, just imagine if uh, someone, if, if a helicase is a uh, put onto this DNA strand and it just opens up two DNA which separates up two DNA strands apart then that DNA must go through the DNA replication stage otherwise it is a loss of huge amount of energy because as we know in each step as you can see in this case ATP is required at each single step ATP is required and DNA B or helicase protein is also a large ATP consuming protein which is uh, uh, continuously engaging ATP and hydrolyzes it to, uh, to gain energy and utilizing the energy to unzip uh, two DNA strands so that's why if once this helicase is uh, hold on to this DNA uh, and separate two strands apart then that DNA sequence must go through the DNA replication okay so this is the most important and interesting step of DNA replication of all so for establishment of this step we need two proteins DNA A and DNA B now uh, DNA A in other hand will initiate the formation of open complex and this open complex formation is facilitating uh, the uh, attachment of DNA B to the DNA strand okay so DNA helicase or uh, DNA B cannot initiate uh, the opening of DNA strands uh, as its own as we have seen in previous cases so that's why this slide is really important so uh, whatever I'm telling you in this slide this is a totally new concept so try to memorize these things in your mind so try to memorize actually the concept okay now in this case DNA A is actually forcing this DNA strand to make open complex now and we know we know what that in normal time there are coiling uh, uh, inside this DNA which is, uh, which is just preventing this DNA to be accessed by the other proteins and this coiling is called the negative supercoiling and we know that neg negative supercoiling means the overwounding of a DNA uh, so, sorry the underwounding of, of a DNA in that, that case so it is supercoiled negatively and as a result of this negative supercoil uh, they cannot interact so they cannot be eligible for the DNA polymerization purpose so they must uh, be opened up and this opening is done utilizing these enzymes uh, and uh, this DNA is helping to open up this uh, portion of the DNA okay now what this DNA A is doing now remember uh, all those cases of topoisomers and the mechanism of topoisomers topoisomers are the particular enzymes which can uh, cut the DNA strand and release the tension uh, for that purpose so what we happen wh when we start to open up a DNA for the DNA replication uh, purpose like this to make this a uh, fork we must open up the DNA it will create tension to the other region and we need to leave the tension by creating uh, a cut in strands okay we, we can release the tension okay but in this case we must produce uh, 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 some 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 sort of position which will uh, leave the tension by uh, melting some of the DNA strands are in between and that is what established by uh, the activity of DNA A okay so what they are doing in this case they are introducing uh, the super coil they are introducing the positive super coil in the DNA segment so this concept is really really important because in normal times there are negatively super coiled DNA are present in, inside the cell and uh, they will be opened up and they will be taken but what how they can open this up utilizing a lot of protein of DNA A so DNA A protein will come in and interact with the DNA strand uh, in a vigorous amount so they will interact it in all the directions and as a result of that it creates a super coil uh, of that DNA and this super coil is a positive super coil okay, of the DNA now these proteins are having a particular domain inside uh, this which can interact with this di uh, phosphodiester backbone of the DNA and DNA start to wrap around uh, the complex of this protein and that eventually creates a tension onto this DNA strand 
and as when a tension build onto the DNA strand onto the circular DNA especially because we are talking about the replication of those kind of DNAs now in those situations in E. coli where you having the circular DNA for example a circular chromosome for example so it creates uh, the tension and for leaving up the tension as this DNA is circular there is no way of leaving the tension if the DNA is uh, linear then no problem uh, with that it will release it by just uh, some amount of recoiling or something like that but in case of this circular DNA there is the only way of leaving this tension which is created by the DNA A proteins and they leave the tension by melting the hydrogen bonds between a particular region of their nucleotide sequence and they just melt this strand and as a result two strands separates apart from each other and that's how two strands are being separated and they produces a open complex and that's how the open complex is formed now right after the formation of open complex they need a lot of amount of energy as ATP so they take the ATP and they utilize it and they load this DNA helicase or DNA B protein onto this open complexes now another important thing I must tell you is uh, for the Im for for the attachment of this DNA B or helicase onto this open complex they must have another accessory protein or helping protein and the protein is called DNA C now DNA C protein is helping uh, to utilize uh, this ATP and finally drag this DNA B onto this open complex of the DNA and they're doing this and right after that what they produces a pre-priming complex now why it is called a pre-priming complex because right after that single strand proteins will bind to the single stranded DNA and the primers or DNA primers will come in and interact with the single stranded uh, single strand binding proteins and helicals will fall off okay so this is a process so if we look at this schematic presentation at below then we can find this again uh, you can see that this is the DNA strand DNA A will come in and there is a complex of DNA so many DNA subunit will come and attach to itself to make a complex structure now this DNA is uh, making give them the platform uh, for those DNA to wrap around uh, itself onto this DNA A uh, structure now they wrap around the structure and it creates a positive tension to release this tension uh, further upstream of that DNA strand uh, uh, some strand of the DNA or nucleotide sequence is getting melted and two strands of the DNA are getting separated with, uh, from each other that is the actual goal we are creating tension and to release that tension that DNA will open up few region of the nucleotide sequences further upstream of create creation of this tension and it will release this and then DNA C will come in and it will help uh, DNA B to, uh, to establish or to hold on to the uh, single stranded DNA and start the formation of pre-priming complex. Now let us see the uh, arrangement of uh, this DNA A and the DNA uh, interaction. Now DNA A protein you can see this is a mm, subunit of DNA A protein okay now this DNA A protein will make a structure like that so the arrangement of DNA A protein you can look at easily in these two pictures so the arrangement in this way and they produces the groove or a regions where the DNA uh, can interact where the phosphodiester linkages of DNA can interact so the DNA segment as you can see in this picture so these are this is the outer layer of DNA they are interacting with the inner region of uh, the, the protein DNA A now if I show you this DNA A protein so this is the DNA A protein region which is giving the platform to these DNA uh, sequences to wrap it around and as a result of that it produces the huge mass of tension because uh, as a result of this coiling onto this uh, DNA A uh, tension arises and for releasing this tension uh, further upstream DNA strands are separated so this is a very very interesting process of the strand separation and totally opposite of that of what we can see in case of the topo isomerase in that case too what we notice is that we need to give the tension uh, to recoil uh, the strand right so right after the synthesis of this DNA or right after the transcription for some time uh, we need to create this we need to release the tension and as a result of releasing of tension it will super coil on its own uh, to counter attack that okay so it's all about uh, the mm, the structural integrity of the DNA and uh, DNA A is playing with the structural integrity for that and these steps are energy consuming the DNA A attachment steps are also energy consuming and as well as this helicase or DNA B attachment is also energy consuming okay 
so this is an energy consuming step that's why this step is the most important and regulatory step because after doing after investing lot of energy you cannot uh, uh, block some synthesis or some process right so you're investing a lot for this process so you want this process to go on once the helicase is loaded onto this single stranded dna okay so that's why this is the most important and most uh, uh, most important process about all in DNA replication in STD coli. I hope it will help you. Thank you.